Good morning, church. Well, I thought that I was going to be able to hold it together, at least, no, Kristen's shaking her head no. <laughs> I'll do the best I can, but I pretty much promise I'm going to be crying at some point this morning. So There's plenty of cleanups around for all of you who, like, start crying when somebody else starts crying. Okay. Uh, we're going to celebrate the window. Yay! <laughs> Uh, you have a, a wonderful photograph in your bulletin, and if you didn't get a bulletin, please get a bulletin. There's a photograph of the window in there. You can thank Ashley for that. Thank you so much, Ashley. And there's a beautiful display board back by the window that shows the progress of the construction, the renovation work that was done, and uh, the history around the window. Uh, so, and if you get a chance today to go outside and look at it from the outside, it's just, it's spectacular. If you remember um, the foggy protective covering over it, you could barely see it. And now I remember how dark it used to be in here, and it's not dark in here. because It's all, all cleaned up and ready to go for the next hundred years. So thanks be to God for that. All right. Do we have announcements that we need to make? Community dinner two Wednesdays from now. Next Wednesday, Pastor Heather will join you. Please come and welcome her. You have any coffee and donuts beforehand? Nine o'clock coffee and donuts. So I know y'all like to eat donuts, so that's enough to get you out here. Okay. Bring your friends. All right. What else? Any other announcements? Oh, I know what I wanted to announce. The roof is going to be started this week, so if you are participating in something here at church, uh, just be aware that the parking could be pretty tight. You might have to park at a meter. Um, I, the parking in the grass is also an option, but just be cognizant of the roofers that will be here doing work. Okay. All right, the light of Christ is before us. Let's see, what do the two candles represent? That Jesus is both human and divine. Yay, gold stars, gold stars. <laughs> All right, let's take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds to worship. Lord, we ask that you be present with us in this moment and every moment and that our worship would be pleasing to you and glorify your most holy name. Amen. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit for the call to worship. Come all who are hurting, sick, or burdened, or broken. Let us come before our healing God. Let us worship our good and loving Lord. Our first hymn this morning is Have Thine Own Way, Lord. It's hymn number 382.
would you join with me in the unison prayer? Almighty and everlasting God, who can banish all affliction both of soul and of body, show forth your power upon those in need, that by your mercy they may be restored to serve you afresh in holiness of living through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. In our time of prayer, let us pray for those that are on our hearts and minds, those prayers of concern and thankfulness and need. Uh, would you please pray for Amy Saunders? She's having a terrible allergic reaction going on. Um, she needed to come back from camping uh, probably yesterday, but they're going to come back early today. Uh, she's covered with hives, and I'm sure that's just miserable for her, but they're not sure what she's allergic to or reacting to, so please pray for her. Other prayers on your hearts? Sheila. Okay, great. Thanks. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we do all kind of business. <laughs> Save the Sheila. <laughs> all right, someone over here. Oh, go ahead, Sherry. Oh, okay. Oh, good. So prayers for Patty. She's having an allergic reaction also. And Sherry's daughter-in-law is uh, pregnant. She's going to have a baby. Grandma. Grandma. All right. Someone else. So Kathy. Other prayers. Go ahead, Norma. Oh, I don't know if everyone heard. So prayers for Roger. His sister passed away this week. And then continued prayers for Beth Conley. There's some decisions that need to be made this week. Other prayers on your hearts? Sherry. God bless you. You have a great grandson? No, just Phil. Oh, just Phil. That's right. <laughs> I had to give her that. I had to. Karen, please. He's having multiple issues. You said Perry? Perry. Yeah. So Karen's uh, brother-in-law, Perry, he's having multiple issues. We're still going to pray for Joel. And we're glad he's here. Praise God for that. Mm -hmm. Any unspoken prayers? Yeah. And did I miss anybody? No. Okay. Let us pray. Would you pray with me? Gracious Lord, we come in this time of prayers. We lift those that we have named. We have Edith, who has a big birthday coming up soon. Bless her, O oh Lord. We pray for Amy and Patty and their allergic reactions. We ask, Lord, that you would lift this from them. For Sherry's daughter-in-law, who's pregnant, we pray. Pray for a peaceful and healthy pregnancy and labor and delivery that goes smoothly. Lord, we lift to you Scott, 
And we pray for Beth and all the decisions that will be made this week. Bless her, O oh Lord, with your love and grace. God, we pray for Roger and your compassion and mercy for him on the passing of his sister. Lord, we pray for Sherry's family, travel mercies for them as the family that comes in for a somewhat reunion and a celebration of life. May that time be a blessing. May the laughter carry them all through the time that they're together and into the future. And Lord, we ask that you hold Keith in your mercy and healing and for Phil and Emmy Lou's great-grandson, may his fourth birthday be a tremendous joy and blessing. And Lord, we pray for Perry, and we pray for Joel. We ask, Lord, for your healing for them. And for the unspoken prayers, we lift these to you as well. And we pray for Pastor Heather, Lord. We ask that you help with this time of transition, that you remind us all who we are and whose we are, and that we offer ourselves here as a witness to you and the welcomeness that you have for all people. Bless her, O oh Lord, in her unpacking and in her coming and going. Bless her, Lord, with remembering names and faces and helping to figure out the family trees and the dots to connect and all of the things that can be really rather overwhelming but also a great joy to learn. Lord, these prayers we lift in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. And so with the confidence as children of God, let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we're going to take time to celebrate our window. So there's a big history here. Let me just read some of it for us. On October 7th, 1860, the California Methodist Episcopal Church known as Kaiser's Chapel, was dedicated, 1860. And the building was erected on a 100 and 150 foot lot on the corner of Liberty and Third. The front of the rectangle brick building had a single door entrance with tall windows on each side and a smaller same style window above the door. In 1880, the Lyceum, a youth group was formed on October 4th, 1892, the group became the Epworth League. This was the beginning of the group responsible for our window that we praise today. The motto of the Epworth League was, look up, lift up. And if you look up and look, you can see the words, look up and lift up in the stained glass on the window. These words are placed in circles at the top of the window and inscribed across the bottom is the words presented by the chapter number 8884. In 1884 and 18 through 87, under the Reverend J.E. Wright, many improvements were considered. During 1894, Reverend G.D. Crisman completed extensive alterations increasing its in size and convenience, making it the most beautiful commodious church finest in the Mon Valley. Commodious. Now that's a word I don't read every day, but that came from Reverend Crisman and it was found in the history by Reverend Renton. We now have a steeple with a bell tower and a round room on the right. Do you all know the round room? I love the round room. It's a little bit messy right now, but I love that we have a round room that we can call it the round room. And above the set of double doors is a large stained glass window. In 2016, oh, we jumped up way ahead. We're way ahead now. 2016, a thorough examination indicated that over the years, the condition of the window had deteriorated to the point that a restoration project was necessary. It was a costly project since the window had to be removed, refurbished, and then replaced. The members of the church rose to the occasion, raised the necessary money, and began work the summer of 2020. We actually, we signed the contract for it right before COVID hit, and then the work started right after COVID hit, and that was interesting. 
Now the beautiful, yes, interesting is what I'm going to call it. Now the beautiful window is back where it belongs and most importantly, safe to enjoy for many years to come. In all the history of our church by Reverend Renton, this is all that's recorded. As we look at our glorious window, we can give thanks to the youth of California. Do you remember the coin collections that the youth did for the windows? I remember that, the buckets that were around. Remember who served, they served as a large factor in keeping up the spiritual tone of the church and raised money for the glorious window, inspiring those inside the sanctuary as well as those residents that walked past to look up and lift up. The window restoration would not have happened without the committed work of trustees. I have to name Marty Libertor. He hung in there even when he came off trustees, he took care of that, the window project. It also wouldn't have happened without the committed, faithful patience of the church council and many church members and the tireless prayers of everyone. Did you pray for the window to be completed? Raise your hand. Oh, please, and it is. Um, when I came here in 2017, when you walked by the window, you could see it bowing. It bowed out four to six inches in parts um, and it was fairly stable, but how long can that bow continue to support all the upper panels? And so it's really an absolutely, truly remarkable day that we have today that we can celebrate that the window is completely restored, all back together, all the wood has been renovated or replaced, painted, and the protective covering is on the back. So let's um, pray for stories about the window uh, since this work started, what it means to different people. So I know it's awkward to turn around, but this part of the window, it opens and it actually opens now, except that there's a protective covering on the outside that prevents it from doing so. And we're going to leave it like that, but it functions. Uh, all of the stained glass has been restored, cleaned and painted. I don't know if you have a favorite section of it. I love the purples that are up there. They're just beautiful. I know Kathy calls this the Christmas panel. I'm not seeing it, but she sees Holly, and so that's probably Holly. Yeah, this, it looks like thistles to me too, but the leaves are Holly leaves. So, okay, let's just take a moment. Lord, we give you thanks. We praise you for the symbolism that this window brings, that through anything, including a pandemic, you can provide restoration and healing. Lord, we know that this window is just a material thing, and yet to the community, it means so much. As we look at our building from the front, it's glorious to see. And we pray, Lord, that the window would continue to be a beacon of Jesus for others for decades and decades and decades to come. We give thanks, God, for your inspiration that moved so much generosity that the window can be completed and completely restored with zero debt. Zero debt. That's worth clapping for. Lord, we thank you for the challenges that came in the course of this work because it taught us who we are, who we can be together. And Lord, we give you all the glory that this window represents, for it is but a small part of your total glory for the world. Amen. All right, woohoo! Will you run it again? Yeah, I'm sorry. I That's okay. I all right. I don't have to do tech. Go ahead, Amy Lou. Uh, Pastor, I just thought it was appropriate I interrupt you one more time <laughs> before you leave. I just took advantage of it. The uh, picture in the front of the church is a present from the congregation for you. Thank you. Um, yeah. When you uh, are having your morning coffee, I expect you to pay homage to it and to us. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a joy. That. 
Thank I you. can do that. Thank you. It's beautiful. So beautiful. And just as a reminder, you have a picture in your bulletin. So if you didn't get a bulletin, make sure you get a bulletin. And there's probably an extra. So if you know someone else that would like to have a picture, please pick it up for them. One more. Every year, the UMW, United Women in Faith, gives a pen to someone who supports us. And Pastor Dawn, ever since she has been here, has been faithful and supported us. And, um, and Sorry. this year, she is the one who is getting the pen. Aww. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, you all hear me sniffing on the microphone. Does anyone have anything they'd like to say? And you want to run the video one more time? You guys can't see it if you want to step forward to see. That was the old window. Me and Joe watched them do that while eating ice cream. Remember how bright it was in here for a while? Yep. That's COVID. And thank you to Ashley for putting together the slideshow. I think that for the sake of time, we're going to skip the next hymn unless someone was really looking forward to singing it. All right. <laughs> I invite you... Uh, to uh, extend the invitation to give our tithes and our gift offerings. And if I could have uh, someone help with that, would that be great?
God, we ask your blessing on these gifts and tithes. Help us, Lord, to see them as most abundant, using them to extend your kingdom here and throughout the world. Help us, Lord, to know your will for these gifts, that we would use them as you want us to. In Jesus' name, we dedicate this. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated.
The scripture reading this morning comes to us from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 31 to 37. May God bless the reading and hearing of the word. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So it is so very easy to feel as if we are separated from God. It is good to know that God assures us that nothing can come between us. Nothing. That is a means, I believe, of healing. If nothing can come between us and God, there in that space is not distress or turmoil or pain or sorrow or sin, Instead, in that space, there is healing. Think about it this way. We have waited and waited and waited and waited a little more for the window to be completely restored. And we're here. It's complete. Beautifully finished for the next however many years. And still, if we look back, consider all that occurred that could have and maybe should have separated us from one another, God in us, the likeness of God. Even before COVID, think about it. Well, think about it. It was sort of turmoil around the window. I mean, it was a dauntingly expensive project. The window had been bowed for ages and ages and ages and ages. Why now was it in peril? I mean, the price tag alone was so daunting that it created grumbling and parking lot meetings, I'm sure. And still, in spite of us, the work is done. Despite us, God remained very present throughout the entire process. And I'm not sure that everyone realizes that, and so I'm hoping that the message helps us realize God's presence. God was with us through that entire process, never letting us go. And today we can celebrate because it is finished. It's finished. Those words should resonate in our minds. We have heard them before when Jesus gave himself for us up on that cross and stated it is finished. There was healing also. Now, I know that we're going to celebrate the window completion, and still I believe that the window project in many ways is a bookend, if you will. So I don't know if you know this, but in the Bible there are bookend stories. There are stories that connect one another and hold together all the story in between. And so I believe that the window project bookends the tower, the bell tower project. Y'all remember the bell tower project, don't you? Well, not everyone. I don't remember it. I wasn't here, but I remember the aftermath. Mm Mm-hmm, yeah. What was torn down is now built up. What began with much turmoil now finishes with great breaths of joy, relief, and even perhaps perseverance. In scripture, there are those number of bookend stories. They bookend, they capture what's happening within them and the significance of them. And they start and finish a theme or a teaching. They mark a time of delineation, if you will, where something is to be learned 
and reinforced and sometimes retaught. How many of you need to be retaught something? Yeah, me too. Like, say please and thank you. You'd think I would know to do that, but I just assume that everyone understands that that's understood. But no, we need retaught sometimes. And this is what we're within today. That lesson, I think, or theme of these bookends is healing. The healing that comes in remarkable ways through ordinary people in regular old places like California United Methodist Church. I want you to know this week I had two non-church people, two, tell me how beautiful the window and the doors look together. Any of you remember the door project? It wasn't all that filled with turmoil, but oh, the decision that was to be made to actually do it. It was quite the decision at council. And now we have doors that match and blend with such a glorious window. Why do you think that we breathe in a deep breath rather than a great sigh? Why do you sigh? Because something's not going right? Because you're tired? Today we breathe in a deep breath. And it's possible that with God, not even the tower, not even the doors, not even the window, and soon not even the roof will be able to separate us from God. Amen? Amen. It's not possible that the tower, the doors, the, even the ramp, did you know we had a little bit of a ramp project that had to happen? Somebody took care of it for us, and I won't mention any names, but if you remember last year, the ramp sunk like six inches, and it, it needed to be repaired, and that was taken care of. But not the, not the ramp, not the window, the roof, They're not going to separate us from God. In fact, I believe that they are all moments for God's healing. We have learned and experienced over these years that we can do hard things. Even before I got here, you were learning you could do hard things. That nothing separates us from the Lord. That the healing of God comes in many ways through many situations by many different people. It means we're always part of something bigger. So anytime we're grumbling about something church-related, we need to be reminded of how much we would miss it if it was not here. How much we miss those who have gone on to glory. How much this place, this space, is for many of us home. It means that we're always part of something bigger, something more as followers of Christ, followers of God the Father, followers of the Holy Spirit. Now I'm sure I can see that you will agree that not all that things in life don't always go smoothly, right? In fact, on any given day, I think there's something that doesn't go right. With God, we can know that even in the rough parts, we can remain with God. And therefore, with one another. We will get frustrated. We will be impatient. We may fall ill. We may suffer hardship. We will experience loss. We will navigate through change. Oh my gosh, that dreaded C word. We will say goodbyes. And we will remember who and whose we are. Amen? We are children of God Almighty. We are siblings in Christ Jesus, and nothing can separate that. We are disciples of the Holy Spirit, and with that we are called to something more than what we were, something better. And nothing separates us From God, nothing, period. Now, as we begin a new portion of our faith journey, I invite you to be anointed for this. And so I invite those of you that would like to be anointed to come forward.
Would you help me join? Would you help me close the service by joining together to sing "It Is Well with My Soul," hymn number three seventy seven. Thank you, Lord, for this chapter in our lives. It has been wonderful. Be with us. Journey with us. Be with Pastor Dawn and her family. Be with us as we take our new road. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.